Hello there and welcome to our COP online evening service. It's so great for us to have you with us. We are excited about what God is doing. Yes, we are excited about what God is doing today and in these times because his hand is stretched out in miraculous ways. Great things are happening. Let's start, as always, our evening service with Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. For our praise moment tonight, we are going to Back to the Psalms, and we're going to talk again about circumstance of praise. When do people in the Bible praise the Lord? In this case, in Psalm 63, it's when he wrote, again, it's David writing a psalm in the midst of the most unusual circumstances. Not exactly, you know, we kind of think that when people are going to be writing a song, it's because... They're like sitting on a cloud with their harp. <laughs> They're sitting in a meadowy field with beautiful sunny skies. What a beautiful time to sing a song of praise to God. But in this case, Psalm 63, it says at the top of the psalm, a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. And it says, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. You know, we have even mentioned this before, but where was David? He was in a desert. What do you do in a desert? You search for water, you search for food, you search for a way out. You're thirsty, especially those Judean deserts. You can be very, very, very thirsty because it's hot and it's just dry, brown hills, brown fields, brown everything. It's barren. It's hot. It's a thirsty place. But it says, oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. And we know that God is our priority over any physical need that we might have. God is our priority. During this pandemic, I think all of us have learned this, haven't we? We've learned what is truly important to us. We've learned what we can let go, what it turned out to be just frivolous, and we didn't need that anyway. And we've learned what truly matters. I know that all of you have experienced that, like we have, all of us have. It's changed the way we look at life. 
And especially because it's gone on and on, and now there's this second wave, it has changed. And we have learned what we really need. And we know that what we really need is God. We really need the Lord. We need to be working for God. We need to be sharing the Lord with people, and we need God in our lives. And we see ourselves, our, our COP members, retaining their jobs when other people are getting retrenched. We see them getting promotions when other people are losing their jobs. We see lots of good things, but we see how important God is in our life during a, a crisis. He is our number one priority for so many good reasons, and we have learned that. What I want to say to you tonight about this is, again, the priority of praising God. We don't just, it will always end in praise. We don't just wait till the end when all things are all wrapped up. Everybody can say thank you when it's all very nice and it's all wrapped up in a bow and it's a finished deal. But we need to be praising God right from the beginning. He was in the desert when this happened. And he started just praising God. God, you are my soul's desire. I long for you. Even my flesh longs for you. That's when he's there in the desert. I remember years and years and years ago, my goodness, I was still very young at the time. And as is the case with a lot of people in the Philippines, I had TB. And I remember when my husband told his uncle, Uncle Lester, oh, my wife is diagnosed with tuberculosis. She has swirls in both lungs. His immediate response was, bless God, now there's going to be two of us in the family with the testimony of being healed from TB. <laughs> because he had been healed when he was a very young man as well. Well, as it turned out, God healed me. Yes, he did. And I was completely healed and I have no scars on my lungs, completely awesome lungs. But Uncle Lester's first response was praise. Bless God, another testimony. We need to switch gears a little bit in our minds that when we're in the desert, we praise God. When we get the bad news, we bless the Lord. When retrenchment is going on, we praise God. He is our provider. When people around us are losing their jobs, we praise the Lord who provides for us, who sees our every need, who sees every sparrow, and we are of so much more value than the birds of the air, than the sparrow that flies. God sees, God knows. Praise him with all your heart because he is everything to us. Amen. Right now, we have an opportunity to do exactly that. We have an opportunity to stand together, to lift up our hearts and our eyes to him, and praise with all of our heart in Jesus' name. Let's worship God together.
COP, good evening. Tonight for our evening services, we're going to be continuing with our follow little mini series that we're going through. Tonight, we're going to be talking about why follow Jesus, why follow God, why follow the word. You know, what we should most be involved in is one word. Jesus. I'm into Jesus. We need to all be into Jesus. Not another tag or title or promotion or anything else should ever come close to competing. We shouldn't let the extra stuff that's happening in life from time to time that this world tries to pass off or promote dominate us. That God in the flesh never tried to impress anybody by playing their religious games that they had to play. So if God didn't, if Jesus didn't, why should we? You know, we want to pray, Lord, give us the pure, unadulterated gospel of Christ every day. No more, no less. So how do we follow Jesus and why? Isaiah 48 verse 17 says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way that you should go. We need to understand we are talking about following. We need to know this important part of scripture. It says he is the one who is going to lead us. He is the one who's going to tell us what we should do and where we should go. What does that mean? That means we need to be spending time in relationship with him. How are we going to learn about where to go if we don't spend time with the person who's going to guide us? How are we going to know where we shouldn't be going if we don't spend time with the person who's there to teach us? The end of that passage in the ESV says, who leads you in the way that you should go. That's Jesus. That's what he does. The NIV says, who directs you in the way that you should go. Now, I also like what it says in the New Living Translation. It says, who leads you along the path that you should follow. There are certain paths that we should be following and not following in life. Paths we should be on and paths we should stay far away from. And we're going to be taking a look at that tomorrow night together. But let's understand some things. Why should we follow Jesus? Well, very simply, he came to set us free. That that's who he is. That was his role. That was his purpose in life. Let's take a look together at John 8 verse 36. It says, so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. There is no more bondage, COP. There is no more slavery. We have only a justified life that is ahead of us. God offers us freedom from sin as we follow Jesus, as we follow him and what we learn through his word. So what is a justified life? It's talking about just as if you have never sinned. That is why we follow Christ. A second reason of why we should follow Jesus we should follow him because he came that we may have life. Not just any life, but John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes to only steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Not just to live for the sake of living, but have an abundant life. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The things you are looking for in life, the dream home, the promotion, the business opening, the dean's lister, and more, those things happen how? As you are following the path of life that God has desired to put you on, as you follow Jesus and what he is asking of you, these things do come to pass in your life. James 1 verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Every good thing, COP, comes from God. So as we live a life following Jesus, following that path, these things of life are going to come. They're going to be added. They're going to be provided by whom? Your Heavenly Father. If you take a look with me right now in Psalms 31 verse 19, it says, How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. How many of you want God to pour out some goodness in your life? You know what? If you fear God, 
that is stored up for you, which you have wrought for those who take refuge in you before the sons of men. It was part of his purpose. It was so we could follow. We could have life in him and through him. His goodness is ever flowing and it is stored up for you. How? Keep living according to the word of the Lord. Keep fearing him. Keep loving him. Keep serving him. What is another reason why we should follow? We should follow him because he came so that we can have a relationship with him. In John 1 verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Equal heirs, equal rights is what God is offering if you follow this path. John 14 verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus meant to make the complicated simple. He wanted to cut through these rules and regulations that men set up and get to the point, which was relationship. He purposely wants relationship with you, and he purposely put it out there so that anyone could reach and could attain a relationship with Jesus Christ, where people could have the chance to understand him to embrace him. And what was his message? Two simple words. Follow me. We need to follow. He is calling out to us to follow so that we can also have that relationship with him. What's another reason why we should be following? His words literally will help guide and sustain you. Now we saw in Isaiah about our paths, but take a look at Matthew chapter four, verse four. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We need him. We need his words and we need to follow. We also know the verse in the Bible that talks about the birds and the flowers from John chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. And COP, if God cares about birds and if God cares about flowers, how much more are you? He will help you. He will sustain you. He is there for you. Another reason why we should follow him. Number five, he offers us freely his love. John 10 verses 17 to 18 says, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This is the charge that I receive from my Heavenly Father. You know, can you imagine being able to truly say, I like being with you. I like being in your presence. It brings me pleasure. If you heard one, someone saying that to you, that would be just about the biggest compliment you could pay anybody. Imagine being able to say that about Jesus and Jesus being able to say that about you. I love you. I want to be with you. I like being with you. I like being in your presence. It brings me pleasure. Being in a relationship with Jesus is like a two-way street. He enjoys you and he wants you to enjoy him. We need time to be still, to speak, to talk, to listen, to pray, to drink from the delightful well of his endless love that he has for each and every one of us. There are some good addictions that are out there and this is one and spending time with our Heavenly Father and realizing the love that He has to be with Him and experience His love. He sent His Son to die on the cross for you because of the love that He has for you. So what then should our response be? It should be follow Him. Number six, He created us. In John 1 verse 3, it says, All things were made through him, and without him, not anything made that was made. You know, we need to understand, we are his creation. In his image, 
for his purpose, to worship him, to love him, to glorify him, to have a relationship with him. That is what we were created for. We were created to follow him, that we could walk with him, that we could talk with him, that we can have that relationship. But our very point of creation was for him. Another reason why we should follow him. Number seven, he heals us. For those of you who are home and you feel there's sickness and disease in your body, for those of you that are claiming healing for yourself or for a loved one, this is for you. In Matthew 12, verse 15, but Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. Many followed him and he healed them all. And he healed them all. You know what? There's countless examples of healings in the Bible. People who were dead brought to life. Woman with the issue of blood. Lame to walking. In John 6, 32, it says, A large crowd followed him. Because, why? Because they saw the signs he was performing on those who were sick. You are needing healing? Great. Follow the healer. You need to claim protection for your family, healing for a loved one. Follow the healer. Why? Because he performs signs, miracles, wonders, and he loves you. In Mark 19, verse 2, the same is being said. In Matthew 20, verse 34, it says that he was moved to compassion. Moved to compassion, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him. God is moved to compassion in touching you, in healing you, in meeting you where you are in your life. Why? He loves you. He created you. He desires a relationship with you. Now let's take a look at this passage, Mark 20, 34, and we see this moved with compassion. Jesus touched their eyes, so Jesus felt something. He acted on something, and immediately they were healed. But what was their response after they were healed? They followed him. They didn't go turn away. They didn't go do their own thing afterwards. They were following the person who touched their life. They were following the person who healed them. Ultimately, we should follow Jesus. Why? He is Lord. Not just because of what he can do for us, but we get to have a beautiful relationship with him each and every day. What an honor. Isaiah 48 verse 17 again. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that we should go. We need to understand through the Word of God, through our daily prayer life, through our daily worship life, we get to experience with the One who leads us in the way that we should go. All the more in this season of uncertainty, we need to hold on to the person who is leading us in the way that we should go. Daily, we need to take things to God in prayer about the path we're on, about life, about decisions that we're making, about our future, about our fears, about healing, about things that we need. You know, as you go through the Bible and you go through scripture, you see some important things about a path. A path means to have a guide. You know, you see, and we're going to be talking about it over the next few days, that his word is a light unto our path and that there's things that light up the way for us. But there's another thing about our path and life that we have from God. We have a guide. The Holy Spirit is our guide. And there's four things that we see he guides us in in our life. Number one, he guides us in truth. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And we know that the truth sets us free. Free from sin, from death, from loneliness, from whatever we're going through. Free from anything that is contrary to the word of God. And we find truth by allowing the Holy Spirit to be our guide and to teach us and reveal to us the truth about Jesus. That he came to be our savior. 
The Spirit will also guide us in our lives as we seek Him through prayer. John 16 verse 13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you in all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. Now, that talks about like a good guide, a guide we need in our life. The second thing that the Holy Spirit will guide us in. The Holy Spirit will guide us away from sin, away from things that can destroy our relationship, that can destroy our walk with God, that can take us away from the promise, that can cause us to lose the hand of protection that's in our life. Through prayer, our powerful communication tool that enables us to hear from God and to speak with God, we are able to be led by the Spirit. Talking about the lust of flesh, the sin, lies, all sorts of things that would have us following earthly desires, money, greed, pride, lust, and more can be gone. Why? Because when we walk daily with the Spirit, He will guide us into what? Into godly pursuits. Galatians 5 verse 16 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You don't do both. You can only follow one. So when you are walking with the Spirit, that flesh desire, that stuff that can lead you into sin, that distraction, that stuff that can take you away, you can't follow it. You can't do it. You just keep following the Holy Spirit and let Him guide you. Guide you where? Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You will be walking according to the plans and promises of God. The third thing that the Holy Spirit will guide us in. He will guide us to our purpose. When we seek God, He reveals our giftings, the talents that we have. No matter what He has called us to do, He will equip us to complete our mission, our call. Now the Spirit was upon Jesus, enabling Him to complete His mission from God. Luke 4 verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the liberty to the captives and recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So what is it that God is calling you to do? What is it that God is asking you to do? What skills has God given you? What abilities has God given you? God wants to use those in your daily life. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Let him be your guide to understand what it is God wants for you, where he desires you to go. The fourth thing that the Holy Spirit is going to do for us in our life and help us in the path and help us to follow is he will guide us to the will of God. When David prayed, he asked God to teach him and lead him in the way of God. Not simply the easiest way. No, he wanted to know, God, what is your way? No matter where God leads us, we can trust him that he will be with us every single step of the way. We can learn God's will for our lives as we learn more about him through prayer and through reading the word of God. I love Psalms 143 verse 10. It says, teach me to do your will for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Not in those bumpy roads, not in those things that could cause you to trip or fall, but on that level ground, teach me to do your will. Why? Because you are our God. Tonight, we want to pray, and we want to pray that God is going to be with us, that he's going to help us, because we do want to live a life following him. We do want to follow his will, to trust him, obey him, love him, stay on the path that he is asking us to follow, and we desire for the Holy Spirit to be our guide. So let's pray tonight together. Father, Lord, we come to you. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we're understanding more that we need to live a life of following and what that looks like. Lord, we pray, touch our hearts and our lives that when we have this unfolding of the word of God, we will be able to apply it in our life. Let us be able to live a life that will follow you, that will trust you, that we will know you have the best in store for us, even when it might not make sense, even when it's not logical. Lord, we know that we can hold on 
to you. Hold on to your promises because they are yes and amen. Lord, we pray for your will to come to pass in our life because, Lord, we don't want anything that's not from your will because your will is what is going to bless us, guide us, protect us, Lord God. Help us to be able to hold firm and to trust you, to trust you in the circumstances, Lord. Even if we're afraid, let us be able to hold firm that, Lord, you love us more. Lord, if you love these flowers and these birds, Lord, you've got us. Father, as we also work on trusting you, we want to love you and obey you through the reading of your word, through prayer, through having an actual real life relationship with you. Not a religion, Lord God, but a relationship where you're our heavenly father teaching us and guiding us and pouring yourself out to us. Lord, we desire to be in your presence and to learn from you and to have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to stay on the path that you have for us, the path that you are asking us to follow. And Lord, we thank you that you have given us, Lord God, the Holy Spirit as such an amazing guide to be with us, to help us, Lord God, that we can count on him to guide us through the steps of life, that we can count on him to help us, teach us, love us, and mold us, Lord God, according to your word, that the fruit of the spirit will become evident in our life, Lord God. Lord, we come tonight and we say thank you. Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters, and I pray, Lord God, for your healing to be upon them, that sickness and disease shall be far from their houses, Lord God, that the blessings of a tither shall be upon them. Lord, we claim twofold restoration. We claim, Lord God, miracles. We claim signs, miracles, and wonders, Lord God. Lord, we speak health, Lord God. Lord, we speak opportunities. We speak increase, Lord. We thank you, God, that in this season we will still see the dream homes, the dream cars. We will see successful businesses, Lord God. Lord, we will see increase. We will see, Lord God, transfer of wealth come to pass. And we thank you that we can hold on to you and worship you. Lord, we look forward to all the testimonies of things that are happening, Lord God, because of your goodness. And we are following you and your path. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Thank you again, COP, for being with me tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to be continuing to talk about following for the next two more nights as we learn some more about what to follow, what not to follow. Have an amazing night, and I'll see you tomorrow night right back here for our evening service. Bye, COP.